start with the name of allah who is kind and most merciful assalamu alaikum and good morning to all the sick distinguished guests professors and post graduates we welcome you all i am dr shabana mukhtiar lakho i am working as assistant professor gastroenterology and hepatology at the department of uh, chandka medical hospital shahid motan mabe nazir bitu medical university i am uh, moderating this session so let us start the session uh, for that i will call the dear persons of my session first of all i will call dr shamail zafar saab uh, he is the professor of medicine and head of the department of gastroenterology and endoscopy services at lahore medical and dental college please sir come on the stage and have a seat i will call my second chair person dr noman zakir Uh, he is consultant gastroenterolo gastroenterologist and hepatologist at Pakistan Kidney and Liver Institute Lahore please please sir my third chair person is dr sadiq achzai he is associate professor at bulan university of medical and health sciences quetta he is also a head of department of gastroenterology at civil hospital quetta so today uh, we have only one uh, state of art lecture in this session uh, on acute on chronic liver failure for that i will i will like to call our speaker professor dr hanshi len to give a virtual talk a state of the art virtual talk on acute on chronic liver failure Anshi Lin has been deeply involved in the research of pathophysiology of cirrhotic portal hypertension, liver fibrosis, and complications of the cirrhosis. He has continually received the research award of professor grade from the National Science Council for 10 years. He has been invited to join the editorial board of Journal of Hepatology from 1995 to 1999. Currently, he is the academic editor of Philos One. and the editorial board of hepatology international he has published greater than 50 350 peer reviewed articles in sci journals i have nothing to disclose the course of cirrhosis is classically divided into two major periods compensated and decompensated cirrhosis the term of acute decompensation defined the acute development of one or more major complications such as night ascites hepatic encephalopathy or gi hemorrhage the recently recognized syndrome of acute chronic liver failure which is characterized by single or multiple organ failures always occur in the setting of an episode of acute decompensation when acf develop the mortality is much higher than acute decompensation there is no consistent definition of acf in the literature currently there are three major definition of acf from society including apaso eso and the north american consortium for the study of end stage liver disease the nasa apaso defined acf as an acute hepatic insult complicated within 4 weeks by clinical ascites and or hepatic thick encephalopathy intrahepatic organ failure is not required to make the diagnosis eso and nasel's definition of acf require the presence of organ failure the pathophysiology of acf has not been clearly defined however a number of evidences suggest that systemic inflammation play an important role several years ago we have observed that plasma and the toxin level were increase in patient with cirrhosis and its increment is related to the severity of cirrhosis in addition the inflammatory cytokine following and the toxin signaling like tnf alpha and io6 were also increased in relation to the severity of cirrhosis on the other hand oxidative stress was also increased in cirrhotic patient and plasma mda level was correlated to the level of endotoxin 
the occurrence of plasma and the toxin with the subsequent systemic inflammation in cirrhosis is believed to be caused by the pathological bacterial translocation. This is a complex result from the intestinal dysbiosis associated with dysfunctional epithelial barrier and defect in cell junction and the impaired inland immunity and ultimately lead to the translocation of bacteria into the mesentery lymph node and portal circulation. The development of acute decompensation or ACF usually followed by certain precipitating events. These events leading to ACF differs according to country and area and can be categorized into hepatic or intrahepatic insult. Bacterial infection is the most often intrahepatic insult while HPV reactivation is the frequent hepatic insult in Asia. Systemic inflammation play an important role for the pathophysiology of ACF. Patients with ACF have more intense systemic inflammation and oxidative stress than in patients with acute decompensation. This was evidenced by certain markers of inflammation such as WBC count, CRP level, and inflammatory cytokines. Several outcomes are noted following systemic inflammatory syndrome. These include tissue hypoperfusion, immune-mediated tissue damage, and mitochondrial dysfunction. Endotoxemia induce profound alteration in microcirculation in the kidney. In an earlier experimental model, endotoxemia causes a reduced or no blood flow around peritubular area. The sluggish peritubular blood flow increase the transient time of activated cytokine and leukocyte and may amplify dangerous signal in such area. The filtered and the toxin may act with toll-like receptor and initiate inflammatory reaction and oxidative stress with subsequent tubular damage. Several studies have reported that immune-mediated tissue damage is noted after systemic inflammation. These include ACLF is commonly associated with leukocytosis and activated immune cells that may migrate into tissue and cause immune pathology. TNF alpha and MF kappa B dependent signaling cascade may play a role in hepatocyte apoptosis. ACLF associated AKI may also involve vascular microthrombosis and cell apoptosis. And finally, direct inflammatory damage to tissue and cells lead to the release of huge amount of damage associated molecular patterns act on the immune cells receptor that cause a further immune tissue damage. Growth differentiated factor 15 and fibroblast growth factor 21 are mitokines and are used as a biomarker for mitochondrial dysfunction. This study showed us Plasma GD, F15, and FGA21 levels increase in a staggered fashion from healthy individual to patient with acute decompensation and then to ACF. The acyl carnitine to free carnitine ratio is an indicator of mitochondrial fatty acid beta oxidation. Patients with ACF and acute decompensation show an increase in this ratio compared to healthy subjects. All these findings indicate that the presence of mitochondrial dysfunction in ACF. The proposed pathophysiology of ACF is summarized in this slide. Following the precipitating factor with inflammatory process, cytokine and inflammatory mediators are released. These factors then cause tissue hypoperfusion, mitochondrial dysfunction, and immune mediated tissue damage, respectively. Finally, organ failure occurred. Let's see some clinical association of ACF. It is well known that patients with ACF have higher mortality than those without ACF. In addition, the mortality rate is closely associated with severity of ACF. Non-selected beta blocker have been widely used in cirrhotic patients for primary and secondary prophylaxis of RCO bleeding. Previous studies have shown that 
Selective beta blocker may provide a beneficial effect on gut motility and permeability and systemic inflammation. This observation study showed that probability of survival was significantly lower in ACL patients not receiving beta blocker. In addition, significantly more patients in the beta blocker treated group presented a one grade reduction in ACL classification, while one grade worsening was significantly higher in patients not treated with beta blocker. Further, for ACF grade 1 and 2 at presentation, the WBC count was significantly lower in patients treated with beta blocker compared with the untreated patient. In patients that worsened their ACF rate, the WBC count was also significantly higher in patients not being treated with beta blocker compared with those treated with beta blocker. This study suggested that receiving non-selected beta blocker might ameliorate the severity of inflammation in ACIF. Currently, there is no ideal biomarker for precipitating the outcome of, of ACIF. Chronic liver disease has long been associated with changes in the gut, gut microbiome. This earlier observational study reported that fecal microbiota show a marked difference between the ACLF group and the control group. Certain species were independent predictor of mortality rate and may correlate with inflammatory cytokine. Further study are needed. Several lines of evidence indicate that NGAL present a neutrophil play a protective Role against bacterial infection. This study showed that urinary angle was markedly increased in ACL patients compared to those of no ACF and was an independent predictor of ACF. Urinary angle was also an independent predictor of 28 day transplant free mortality together with male score. In addition, urinary angle significantly improved the accuracy of male in precipitating prognosis. It has been reported that fatty acid binding protein are thought to be critical mediator of metabolism and inflammatory pathway and increased liver FAPP levels have been described in several types of liver injury. This study showed that the patient with ACF has significantly higher baseline urine FAPP level compared to those without ACLF. Moreover, its level increased in parallel with ACLF severity. Patients who develop ACLF during follow-up had significantly higher urine FABP level at admission compared to patients who did not develop ACLF. In the multivariate analysis, male sod sodium score and urine FABP level were the only independent factor associated with the development of ACF during follow-up. Urinary liver FAP level could be used as it could be useful as a new tool to predict complication in patients with decompensated cirrhosis. A disintegrant like and metalloproteinase with thrombosporin type 1 motif 13, the ADM MTF13, is a metalloproteinase that cleaves multimeric von Willenbrand factor. In this study, the author found that ADAMTS13 activity was significantly lower in patients with ACF than in those without ACF, while von Willenbrand antigen was significantly higher in patients with ACF. Accordingly, its ratio was significantly increased in ACF. In addition, when the ratio is greater than 7.9, the cumulated incidence of ACF development was significantly increased and the cumulated survival of ACL dead patient was significantly decreased. So this ratio can be served as a biomarker for ACLF. Treatment of ACF usually needs critical care management. In addition to the vital sign and life support, sepsis evaluation is extremely important. Although lack of clinical trial of nutritional support in ACF, nutrition support 
is mandatory in critical care management. Adequate calories and protein intakes are recommended. Treatment of precipitous events is also very important, such as antibiotics for infection, corticosteroid for acute alcohol hepatitis, antiviral agent for HPV reactiv reactivation, and modality for variceal hemorrhage. Bacterial infections are extremely frequent in ACF. They are severe and associated with intense systemic inflammation, poor clinical course, and high mortality. Bacterial infection is also the independent predictor of mortality. Early and adequate use of antimicrobial agent is important. This study showed that in patients with a puzzle defined ACF without evidence of bacterial infection, prophylactic nozzle treatment reduced the incidence of bacterial infection at day 30 and day 90 compared to placebo group, while the transplant pre survival was not affected. Accordingly, primary nozzle prophylaxis may prevent bacterial infection in patients with ACF. However, it should be noted that nofloxacin prophylaxis may increase the risk of multi-drug resistant bacteria and candidiuria. Extracorporeal liver support may serve as a bridge to liver transplantation. Two large randomized trials show that extracorporeal life support did not improve shortened survival among patients with ACF. Liver transplantation is the rescue modality for treating severe ACF. The five-year patient survival after liver transplantation was lower in the ACF grade 3 patient compared with the other groups, while graft survival was good across all ACF groups. There were several factors that may affect the mortality beyond one year after transplantation. Multivariate analysis showed that post-transplant mortality is affected by the severity of ACF, age, presence of diabetes, and donor risk index. Let's see some potential future treatment mortality. Albumin is a high molecular weight and negatively charged protein. It contributes to 75% of the plasma oncotic pressure. In addition to its oncotic property, albumin has other important functions, including its anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant property. This study showed that native albumin decreased with the severity of cirrhosis, while oxidized albumin increased with the progression of liver disease. In addition, plasma HNA1 and HNA2 level significantly correlated with the level of inflammatory cytokines in patients with cirrhosis. A recent study showed that native albumin protect the liver from TNF-alpha-induced inflammatory liver injury. It showed that TNF-alpha signaling caused perceptin B leakage from the lysosome to cytosol, then triggered mitochondrial dysfunction, mitochondrial cytochrome C release, and caspase 3 activation. Albumin can inhibit caspase B leakage from the lysosome and ameliorating further signaling cascade. In a recent multi-center randomized study enrolled 108 patients with decompensated cirrhosis and non-SPP infection resulting in ACF to receive albumin or placebo in addition to antibiotics. Patients receiving albumin show a lower instance of nosocomial infection. More patients in the albumin group experienced resolution of ACF, while the overall mortality was similar between the two groups. Further randomized clinical trials are, are needed to evaluate the use of albumin in ACF. In an animal model, cirrhotic rat receive a single injection of lip lipopolysaccharide to induce ACF. This led to an induction of systemic inflammation with hemodynamic instability. It also increased the severity of intrahepatic microvascular dysfunction exacerbating hepatic inflammation, increasing oxidative stress, and exacerbating portal hypertension. Simvastatin appear to increase hepatic sinusal function and reduce portal hypertension and markers of inflammation and oxidation. 
This study shed light on the potential clinical use of studying in ACS. Recently, a retrospective cohort study with over 80,000 patients demonstrated a strong association between studying therapy and reduced risk of ACL development in patients with cirrhosis. Increasing doses of studying were associated with progressive reduced hazards for developing ACLF. Further prospective studies are needed to validate these findings in patients with decompensated cirrhosis. In alcohol-associated SERs, a recent clinical trial with a small number of patients showed that FMT reduced inflammatory cytokine and 28 and 90 days mortality associated with a better resolution of hepatic encephalopathy and ascites. Further randomized trials are needed. Pathological bacterial translocation is the initial step to elicit the cascade of systemic inflammation in cirrhosis. Theoretically, inhibition of bacterial translocation will provide beneficial effect for the inflammatory process. In this study, the author found that mucoepithelial and vascular endothelial barrier need to be disrupted simultaneously in order to allow permeation of bacteria from the lumen into the portovenous circulation. FXR appeared to play a central role in the modulation of mucoepithelial and vascular endothelial barrier simultaneously. Therefore, administration of the FXR agonist may reduce bacterial translocation in cirrhosis. This study found that E. coli and protease isolated from ascites from patients with SBP triggered the destruction of tight junction protein, occluding and E. catherine. They further identify a novel bacterial protease activity of E. coli and protease, which is responsible for the cleavage of E. catherine, thus targeting these me mechanisms by blocking the bacterial protease activity by interferes with bacterial translocation and constituted a novel innovative therapeutic strategy for therapy patients. So ladies and gentlemen, it is concluded that ACF has emerged as a major cause of mortality in patients with cirrhosis and chronic liver disease worldwide. Systemic inflammation plays an important role in its pathogenesis. Prevention of major precipitant factors such as infection and alcohol are critical in improving the prognosis. Judicious use of antibiotics and antifungal medication is required. Critical care management strategy and liver transplantation potential listing should be balanced with fertility consideration in those with poor prognosis. Further research of ACL pathophysiology may help in the development of mechanistic treatment, either curative or preventive. Lastly, the Apostle 2023 annual meeting will be held in Taipei, and all of you are welcome to participate this conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Han Chi Lin. It was a wonderful talk. Now, uh, I will request the chairpersons of uh, this session to conclude the uh, session for having uh, concluding remarks. It was a very nice uh, lecture and we all enjoyed it. I conclude the session now. Thank you. Now I will call Professor Dr. Arif Amir Saab to come on the stage for a special uh, announcement. My announcement will always have to do something with food or eating or something. So uh, I don't talk about this stuff. Quickly, um, there's just, we have some, uh, we just have to appreciate our sponsors who in this tough time, financial times have supported us. My request is that every gentleman in the first row, please walk with us to their stalls. We have a little ribbon cutting for them. It's the inauguration of the exhibits. So we will request you, Kashif will lead the, Kashif and Daud will lead the procession on with Asad and everybody else is requested to follow us. Once the that thing is cut, so there are two sets of stalls. One is downstairs, 
will go there first three people the tea is served in the stall upstairs in kohenur so yahan se hum chakkar laga ke we'll go upstairs and enter the second stall the posters are being displayed there and tea is being served there we will start inshallah sharp in about 15 minutes from now so you have 15 minutes to hang around and we'll we'll also be announcing the results of the quiz this morning at the beginning of the next session and i'll also give you dr paul ko has already given me some questions we will give you one of the answers after this